Welcome back to Odd Socks. Yep, you guessed it. it's that time of year. It's sorting out your seeds for this next growing season. Now at this time of year there isn't much that you can grow or that you should be growing. Sometimes starting too early can cause a lot of issues with your plants, especially if they're slightly warmth loving like your tomatoes and things. Now there's lots of people that do and lots of people that succeed at this but there's also an awful lot of people who don't succeed because people don't realise how much heat, light and space that these plants will take up in your home if you do not have a heated polytunnel. So at the moment I just need to go through all my seeds. Now I have spent the last few days cataloguing all the seeds that I've actually have or have got an order to arrive very very soon. Now I'm no expert at spreadsheets but I created a spreadsheet so I could actually physically see on paper PC screen what we actually have and what we do need for future sowings. Now this has been great because I have got a habit, I don't know whether it's you, like you guys, I am really, really bad for ordering seeds when I wake up in the night thinking, oh, I haven't got that, oh, I haven't got that. And we can all get a bit carried away when we're ordering our seeds. Now, I did this a couple of nights ago and I thought, oh, I need cucumbers, oh, I need this, I need that. And then I got onto the flower section and then I was ordering plenty of flowers as well from seed. And then when I got up the next day to organise my seeds, I realised actually I'd already had a lot of these seeds. So I thought spreadsheets in order. So that's exactly what I did. I did a spreadsheet. Now, as you can see on this clip that I've done here, I've got it into three different tabs. I've got a vegetable. I've got a tomato since we have so many tomatoes and I've also got a flower because because this year I really want to go full hog when it comes to adding plants and flowers and pollinators on our allotment. Now I'm not going to get all that done in one year and it is going to take several years to be able to get the plot how I exactly want it with all the flowers, the lavender, things like that but it's going to be a start this year. Now if you hear any squeaking it is my chair I promise. <laughs> I've got a very very squeaky chair to stall to sit on and if you haven't noticed I have a tertiary on. Now I am this is my actual own design and I actually printed it all myself and heat pressed it all myself too and in the near future I'll actually have a website where you can actually go and buy designs of t-shirts and hoodies and also mugs, flasks, all sorts of things that have been designed and made by me. I'm just tweaking the final little bit on the actual website but I'll let you know about that soon enough. Anyway, so this inventory, it actually made me realise how many of certain plants and seeds that I've actually got and how little of others I need. Now I've only got a small amount of lettuce and a small amount of other things so that is definitely something I will need to have a look at to grow because I do like having my lettuces. Now on my spreadsheet I've actually put the year of when the seeds are supposed to be in date on some of the packets. Not all of them had it because it was either where it was torn or they just don't supply it. There's a lot that I actually had in my box that was several years out of date. Now some of those things were already finicky growers so I'm not actually going to waste my time and energy and resources to actually try and grow those. They will be disposed of. Sometimes older seed is perfectly fine to actually regrow but it all depends on the conditions how you've kept them. You hear sometimes of those thousands of year old seeds and things that they've actually planted and they've grown. The thing is, they were actually pulled from the perfect conditions underground where there's very little oxygen and very little other things and dampness to actually wet them. So in the UK, it's very, very wet. And if you keep them in your greenhouse or shed, you run the real big risk of them getting damp and having a much, much lower germination rate. So you really do need to keep them in the home if you can, somewhere dry, not too hot and not too cold. Now for us, 
one of the things I've been doing at the moment is I have these crates because we used to have a set of drawers. Now those set of drawers were brilliant but we soon outgrew them and I have some in this drawer. Now I used to do them from sewing month but now I actually just put them into actual categories so tomatoes, brassicas, onions, whatever it is because I find it easier because sometimes you have an awful lot of storage space needed for certain months of the year plus there's plenty of these seeds that we have that you can grow throughout the whole of the year so sometimes we can miss out on sowing those seeds or multiple sowings of them if we've only got them stored in that one month now storing seeds and having an inventory is all so so personal to the person that's doing it everyone has got some fantastic ways of doing it now one of the ways I like at the moment is in these boxes I have envelopes just tatty old white envelopes and I actually keep the seeds in the seed packets now all these are brassicas now this is brassica number two because we have an awful lot of brassica seeds and that's what I have so I can find I can pull out the envelope which I can see very clearly and know that I've picked out either onions or roots or carrots or whatever it is how you want to label your seeds but it's really important that we do look after them and try to keep them at that high moisture content because it's you don't want to waste all that money that you've probably spent to actually have your seeds be ruined and not be usable. So at this time of year, it's all about the planning. Now, the planning, that is the thing. We have, again, there is so many ways to plan your allotment or your growing space. And last year I did do a small video on one of the ways that we do do it, where we will draw out our plan on the PC, print it off and then laminate it. And then you can literally wipe off the areas that you don't want to grow or when you're changing. That worked really well for us last year. But I never stick to a plan very, very precisely. I'm very free flowing. In fact, it probably drives my husband very crazy because one minute I'll change my mind or the next time he goes down there, I've planted a bush somewhere or planted certain flowers but I can't help it. If I see a space that needs to be filled with something or I have an idea for it at that time, I'm gonna do it. So one of the other ways I like to do, now I am no art student. I like a little doodle, I like a bit of drawing, things like that, but I'm not a massive painter. But sometimes it's good to just sit down and relax. If you're feeling really, really stressed with trying to do your plot and you don't know what to do and you don't know where to go or anything else, is to sit down with a pen and paper, just get a pencil and just scroll out roughly the size of your plot as an idea, it doesn't have to be to scale, and give yourself some ideas of where you want to put everything. You don't have to do it like everybody else, but there is a certain thing that you need to do. You need to make sure that if you've got idea of beds in a certain area and it's heavily shaded, that you plant to that area. There is lots and lots of things that love shaded areas. Don't be put off. There are many, many things like a little bit of shade. And in fact, we have more vegetables that struggle on our plot because it's direct sunlight than we do in our shaded areas. So one of the things I did, now this is a mess. It's not a piece of artwork in any way, shape or form. I am really bad at watercoloring, but it gives me an idea of what I want and where. So I've got the lighter brown, let's call it like a mustardy colour. This is all my wood chip area. But again, just because an area is wood chip doesn't mean you can't plant into it. So that's a really good thing with that. We can actually carry on planting in certain areas where we have maybe got excess wood chip. Or like we're going to do next year, the same as what we did this year in fact, we're going to extend some of the beds by just taking up the wood chip in between and just putting another layer of compost in between. It's a really, really good way of doing that. And if you have slabs everywhere and things like that, it's a much bigger issue if you want to move it or change any of your beds. 
So I find the wood chip really, really good for this. Another thing we've got the polytunnel here, and we've got the greenhouse there, and we've got another one there. This is where our chicken run is going to be. And then we've got the second polytunnel, which should be going up in the next month or two, all weather dependent. And as you can see, the darker brown are the beds. This is the beds that I've actually already got at the moment. So we have the pathway that comes down, so that gives me an idea of what I can and can't split. I've got the new arch gone up. And I've got some other areas where I would like to put a bed in over the next six or so months, which is going to be here. This is going to be a new bed here. The green little blobs that I've got is where I want to put plants, perennial plants that will come back every year. So I know with these little green blobs, I know I've got some form of structure there already. These are my current bushes that I've had on the plot. Now, some of these are quite large, but I know that area is for my currants. The top of the fence at the top of the other side of the allotment, I'd like some lavender or something that, not too tall, but something that will give the birds, the bees, the butterflies, all those kind of brilliant insects a place to go, a place to actually collect pollen and things like that. And I'm not sure what I'm doing. I've also got a row where my rhubarb is because that again that is something that grows back every year so I know that that's always going to be there. I've got some other areas for plants as well that I'm not quite sure what I'm going to put in and obviously in between the current bushes I know I can put some plants in there, some flowers, some shrubs, even a bit of herbs, anything within that wood chip. If I just brush the wood chip away, plant these plants into the ground they'll have a really good start. Now on the very, well on the one side of the plot, I've got a whole new bed area that will be put in. Now this it will be for my annual meadow flowers. I've always loved growing wild flowers. And the fact that you can just scatter them over the ground and leave it as is, is a fantastic thing for me. It will really open up a bit of biodiversity on that plot. Again, I'm no artist, but it actually gives me a little bit of a more of a look. And because you've already got your creative juices going by sketching or painting or however you want to do it, you actually open yourselves up to actually being a little bit more adventurous instead of just sticking to the norm. Again, if drawing's not your thing, there is plenty of apps out there or you can use spreadsheets or anything else to actually create an area where you can adjust and have an actual look. Now, when you're doing your plans on your paper and you're scribbling away or on your PC, just remember that it very rarely ends up how you envisioned. Sometimes it's an awful lot better. Sometimes it's not quite what you had in your head. So even making multiple plans, draw up multiple different designs until you can kind of figure out what you want. It's got to suit you, it's got to suit your abilities, and it's definitely, definitely got to suit your site. Now, there's, there's so many different allotments and growing spaces in the UK and all around the world, and each have different things going on on their sites. You could have very heavy clay soil, you could have sandy soil, you could have the perfect soil, which I'm very jealous of, you could be wanting raised beds, no dig beds. You could be using containers only. There is so many ways of actually doing your own growing space. Just don't be stuck to one way. Use your new plots or a plot that you're expanding or even a plot that you've had for many years. Use it as an experiment. Try new things. Sometimes stepping out of our comfort zone really, really can bring some beautiful and wonderful things. Now, my ways are not right for everybody. Now, everybody is so, so individual. I like doing no dig or let's say less disturbance growing because one, physically, I'm not always well enough to do it. And last year I really struggled with the heavy clay soil. I struggle to bend down a lot as well. Um, if I could afford to fill much higher raised beds, I definitely probably would go down that route. It would make my life an awfully lot easier. 
but I can't do that. I could never afford to do that. But if that's what you need to do and you have the money and the ability to fill those raised beds, be it with old logs or branches or anything like that, then do it. Don't let anybody else tell you you're doing something wrong. It is your plot, your rules. And you'll learn over the years, over the growing seasons, what actually does work and what doesn't work. Just don't be afraid to try something new. And if you've got an idea in your head and everybody's poo-pooing your idea, try it. it. Do a little area in whatever you want to do and try making that thing that you've got in your head. Because there are many, many different opinions out there. Some of them are reasonably accurate. Some of them are true. Some of them are downright crazy when it comes to what people think you should and shouldn't be doing. So just give it a go on whatever you want to do and don't let anybody tell you any different. It's your garden, your space. When you've got your idea of how you want your allotment and you can see what the conditions are, whether it's shaded or whether it's full sun, very wet, soil conditions, whatever you're doing, you can actually then decide on what seeds to grow. Again, there is lots of different things that people will say it will be impossible for you to grow. But trust me, give it a go. Don't spend loads of money, but just maybe give it a go and just see if you can actually succeed. Now what I found on our plot, what other neighbours are unable to grow, we've actually been able to grow on our plot and vice versa. So just literally a couple of plots away can make a big difference. Now it's a cup that can either be down to the skill level, the conditions, the soil, all those different amendments that people add into their own soils. It can all make a massive difference. So don't be afraid to try new stuff. Honestly, if I'd listened to some of the advice that I've had over the years of what I can and can't do, I wouldn't have found some fantastic things and had some brilliant experiences on my plot or when before I had my plot growing in my back garden. So you've got all your seeds, you've catalogued them, you've gone through everything that you actually have. What are you gonna do then? Well, it's a good way to start buying new seed. Now, obviously we all have a thing where, especially if you're a keen gardener or a keen grower, you can get a bit carried away with your seeds. But sometimes having a multiple different varieties of something is a great way to find out if you actually like eating certain varieties because it's a big difference in taste sometimes between the different ones. It's an example of spinach. I love matador, but there is plenty of other spinaches I actually don't like that much or I'd rather have something else. So again, if you don't like something, maybe try a different variety because sometimes the taste is completely different. Once you've got your seeds, you need to do a little bit of research on those seeds. Now, most seed packets will actually have instructions on the back. It will tell you when the best sowing date is, whether it's better to direct sow, whether it's better to put into a pot and grow on some bit. They all pretty much have instructions or this good old Google. Just be careful with Google because you'll type in one question and you will get so many contradicting bits of advice. And again, it's one of those things just give it a try. Once you've got in your head some of the things that you do want to grow and you've bought your seeds, make sure you're sowing them to the right times of year. Now, this doesn't mean that you can't sow anything to May or June like so many people suggest you cannot do. That's rubbish. There is lots of things that you can sow from January, February, March or even later on in the year. Now, one of the things that is, is our chilies. Now, with us, our chilies, we normally do it from mid-Jan to end January, depending on space, time, everything else. But chilies are one of those things that, yes, they are heat-loving. But for you to be able to grow them to their full potential, they really do need to be started early. They take a long time to germinate. And they take a long time to grow up to a certain size. So starting them off much earlier in the year is really, really beneficial. Now, you could start them later on in the year when it gets a bit warmer, if you haven't got the house space and things like that. But what I would suggest if you do that, that you 
that you definitely bring them indoors at the end of the year so they're all ready to grow for the next season and not treat them as annuals. And then you would have saved a little bit of time for the next growing season. So there's lots of other things as well that we actually grow in February that people will say that that's far, far too early. But there is a lots of things that you can sow. So throughout this coming year, we'll be doing videos of when we're actually sowing, what we're sowing and the reasons why we're sowing. Now there's only going to be a couple of things that are warmth loving that we will be starting in the home. Again, our chilies because we've got several different varieties of those and also our tomatoes. They always get started in the house to germinate and to grow on a little bit before they go outside into the polytunnel a bit later on in the year. Normally May, June, um, April, May that we can get them out again all depends on your weather and to be honest every single year has been massively different for us we'll just play that by ear so we need to make sure that we've got the space for all the chilies and all the tomatoes that will be starting off in the home one of the downsides to starting off in your home that you can end up with very leggy sickly seedlings now when you're growing these warmth loving and you're starting them indoors and the seed packet says it needs to germinate at a much higher temperature than what your average house is. You can either pop it on top of a radiator or a shelf above a radiator or on top of the freezer or the fridge where it's a little bit warmer. You can use a propagator. You can create something yourself. There's lots of different ways of doing it. And again, I'm going to show you a video of how we do ours. But the main critical thing that people have is light they do not realise how little light actually reaches those seedlings. Now, if you're growing on a windowsill, you will notice that your seedlings will get leggy and they'll be reaching for that window because there's not an overall light for it. If you think about it in nature, a plant will go into the ground and it's got its whole area covered with light above. That's why it grows upwards. And we need to mimic this in our homes. So either planning your sowing, your seedlings at certain times of the year so you know once you've got it germinated they can go out or by using a light source like a grow light or something like that and again they can be as cheap or as expensive as what you want to use never mind the cost of actually running those lights in the first place LEDs are much much cheaper and lighter and much easier to use so there's a lot to think about when we're actually buying our seeds and thinking about what we're going to do. But just have some fun with it. Don't let anybody tell you you can and can't do something. And don't be that type of person who tells people that they can and can't do something. There's some advice out there of what you've got away with and what you've done, but it's not necessarily the same story for everybody else depending on where you are in the country, depending on where your little area is, there's a big difference in some areas just five to 10 miles apart of what they can and can't grow. So why don't this year, guys, why don't we start supporting more other growers, especially people who are coming that are new into the growing season, who have never maybe done it before, who are maybe asking questions that we can kind of roll our eyes at and go, really? But they've never had any experience. If everybody gave a little bit more support to each and every one of us, maybe the growing scene would be a lot better place. So if you are new to the growing scene, welcome. Welcome to the life of being muddy, dirty fingernails and the excitement as when spring approaches. It's a fantastic hobby or a necessity for some people to actually have, to be outside, to be able to enjoy nature, to have that fresh air, it's a really good boost. So guys, the question, what are you really, really looking forward now to sow? Have you seen anything in those catalogues that you think, oh, actually, do you know what? I can't do without that this year. What's been your amazing success stories? What have been your massive failures? And what are you looking forward to the most this year? As you can see from our seed list from the beginning, we have got a lot of different seeds. 
but I know I need to definitely get a few more. I will be hitting the website soon to actually just pick up a little bit more seed of what we need to grow that we actually haven't got. Now we haven't got acres and acres of land, nowhere near it, but it is amazing what you can grow in even a small space. So guys, thank you for all the support over the year and I can't wait to carry on my growing journey with you. I have lots of plans, I'm trying lots of different new seeds, a few new techniques that we're going to be doing as well, like I said, new growing areas, all sorts of things, and I just cannot wait to get into the growing season. Like my t-shirt says, is it time yet? 